Hello friends, welcome to Cytokia. Hope you all are doing great. This is part 2 of the HPLC MEDIG series. Part 1 was about the basics of hemoglobin HPLC interpretation along with thalassemia alpha and beta. In this part, we will discuss common hemoglobin variant screening by HPLC. So let's begin. Now the crux of the problem is that we have more than 1100 hemoglobin variants discovered so far and HPLC screening is based on the retention time of different hemoglobin fractions and both known and unknown variants may share a common retention time. Hence confirmation is needed by DNA study that is PCR or polymerase chain reaction for known gene mutations or beta gene sequencing. Still HPLC is highly reproducible, has a superior resolution it, and adds automation simplicity and rapid results along with having a very high sensitivity. Now coming to HPS that is sickle hemoglobin. The pathology lies in the beta 6 position of the globin chain in where glutamic acid is replaced by valine which becomes sticky. Uh, in tissues during deoxygenation there is polymerization of the hemoglobin which leads to sickling of the RBCs. These sickle cells are sticky and stick to other RBCs and cause vasoocclusion and then hemolysis both in the peripheral tissues and spleen. It leads to impaired growth, splenomegaly or splenic infarction. Infections are common along with chronic leg ulcers. Chronic hemolysis leads to iron overload because of transfusions and also increased iron absorption. Patient may develop nephropathy, retinopathy and sometimes stroke. In this HPLC graph, we have hemoglobin A0 of near about 62 percent there is an s window in which we can see 25.3 percent of hemoglobin falls a2 is about three percent other fractions including hemoglobin f is within normal range so this graph is of sickle heterozygote also called sickle cell trait. In this graph we have the sickle window of around 90% with a retention time of 4.48. Hemoglobin F is slightly raised. A2 is slightly raised of around 4.6% and HPA0 is near about 2.5%. So A0 is actually absent and it's glycated hemoglobin S that falls in this region. This is the case of sickle homozygous or sickle cell anemia. In this graph we have HPS of around 68%. HPA2 is quite raised near about 7%. Hemoglobin F is around 6.5% and we have a adult hemoglobin that is A0 of around 17.5%. Now in sickle homozygous uh, hemoglobin A0 is not produced. So there are two scenarios in which uh, this picture can happen. One is this patient may be having sickle and beta plus thalassemia that is double heterozygote or the patient may have recent multiple blood transfusions now coming to HPC in the same beta 6 position the glutamic acid is replaced with lysine 
This hemoglobin is prone to crystallization and homozygous individuals have mild to moderate hemolytic anemia with splenomegaly and increased incidence of gallstones. HPS plus HBC compound heterozygotes have similar clinical features to sickle cell anemia. This peripheral blood smear picture shows the crystallized HBCs in homozygous state. This HPLC graph we can see around 34% of hemoglobin falls in the C window. The S window has around 1.9%. A2 is normal 3.1% and we have an A0 of 57.2%. Fetal hemoglobin is normal. So, the S window we have the glycated fraction or the post translationally modified hemoglobin C, and this graph is that of hemoglobin C heterozygous. In this HPLC graph, we can see that the C window has the major amount of hemoglobin near about 90%, 89.1. We have the S window having 3.1, that is the post translationally modified hemoglobin C. HPA2 is mildly raised, 4.5%. A0 is 1.1%, which is actually modified hemoglobin C and hemoglobin F is mildly raised at 1.4 percent. So this is a case of homozygous C. In this HPLC we have the C window having 44 percent of hemoglobin and the S window having 49 percent of hemoglobin. A2 is raised around 5.1 percent and A0 1.1 and fetal hemoglobin is less than 0.8. Obviously this is a graph of sickle and hemoglobin C double heterozygous. Now coming to hemoglobin E. In this variant the 26th amino acid of beta globin chain that is glutamic acid is replaced with lysine. In some foci of northeast India, the prevalence of hemoglobin E is as high as 80% and the E chain or the beta E chain is synthesized at a slower rate and hence can be classified in thalassemic syndromes. 90% of heterozygotes have microcytosis while the homozygotes have hypochromic microcytic anemia which is mild to moderate. The most severe clinical condition occurs when it is combined with beta 0 or beta plus thalassemia. Distinction from beta 0 thalassemia heterozygous cannot be made solely on basis of HPLC. So clinical history, family screening and DNA analysis are required for precise diagnosis. Compound heterozygotes for beta E and beta plus thal have some HPA0 and hence help in identification. HPE, HP Lepore and HPO2 A2 share a common retention time. In this graph we have A2 of around 29.2% and HPA0 of 60.9%. Fetal hemoglobin is mildly raised. Obviously A2 cannot be synthesized in this percentage, so this is an overlap of HPE occurring on A2. So this fraction is A2 plus HPE. So this is a case of HPE heterozygous. In this case, hemoglobin F is mildly raised around 3.5%. We have the major fraction here that is A2 that is above 90 percent P3 of around 4.4 and A0 of around 
this case is that of hemoglobin E homozygous and the A0 is actually glycated HPE. In this case, the fetal hemoglobin is around 15.2%. A2 forms the major fraction around 91%, but we have A2 of around 10.4%. So th this likely is a case of HPE and beta plus thalassemia as there is synthesis of some A0. Also differential diagnosis can be a uh, HPE homozygous patient having a recent blood transfusion. Among the other common hemoglobin variants we have HPD Punjab also known as Los Angeles. The hetero and homozygotes are asymptomatic. The clinical importance lies in its combination with hemoglobin S which has a feature similar to sickle cell anemia. So even heterozygotes of sickle having hemoglobin D have the clinical picture of sickle cell anemia. The other hemoglobin we have is HBO Arab which is again asymptomatic but has an interaction with hemoglobin S and it has a distinctive retention time and often has two small peaks of modified o -Arab between hemoglobin A2 and o -Arab peak which we will see in the coming slides. Hemoglobin leopard is a delta beta fusion gene and the homozygous individuals are indistinguishable clinically from beta thel major, major or intermedia and it is identified by a hump on the downward slope of increased day 2. In this graph, we can see that the D window has around 36.7% of hemoglobin fraction. A2 is normal around 2.0% and A0 is around 53.2 that is the predominant hemoglobin. Fetal hemoglobin is within normal limits. So this is the case of D Punjab or D Los Angeles heterozygous. In this graph we can see that A2 is distinctly, distinctly raised around 34.6%. In the D window we have around 62.1% and HPF is mildly raised. So this is a case of HBE and HBD double heterozygous. In this picture we can see that the hemoglobin F is around 16.2% quite raised. A2 is around 2.1 which is normal. There is a small peak of A0 of around 1.4%. There is an unknown fraction here, this one, which is around 42.2%. We have the S fraction, the S window, which forms near about 30%, 29% of hemoglobin, and a C window of 2.4. So we have the S variant here, along with an unknown variant falling between S and A2, with a retention time similar to D. So, this is a double heterozygous HPD and HPS. The C window is actually modified hemoglobin, either D or S. In this graph, we have hemoglobin falling in the C window having 37.5% with a retention time of 4.91. A2 is 2.2% and between A2 and the C window we have two peaks and the adult hemoglobin is 54.2 with normal range fetal hemoglobin. So this distinctive small peaks before C window and retention time of 4.91 is distinctive for hemoglobin o -Arab. In this slide, we have an unknown fraction falling in the retention time of 
we have the S window having 42.1 percent A2 is elevated at 4.3 and fetal hemoglobin is 5.2 so this slide shows the hit compound heterozygote of hemoglobin S and hemoglobin O are up in this slide we can see the A2 is elevated on 14.3 percent with a bulge on the downward slope of A2 A0 is the major hemoglobin fraction 75.9 percent with slight elevated fetal hemoglobin 4 percent this is the heterozygote hemoglobin lipor. So thank you for bearing with all the slides. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for updates. And please put your comments in the comment section for topics you want discussion on. The next part that is the part 3 will be about the common clinical scenarios in which HPLC is recommended. Have a great day.